So whether you've never learned how to sharpen a knife or you've only done it a few times, this is going to be knife sharpening basics. So whether it's your nice kitchen knives, steak knives, or your everyday carry pocket knife, you need to have a good edge. And so it's a lot cheaper and easier than you think. You can watch YouTube and you can get lost in the endless videos of people sharpening, you know, Chinese or Japanese knives to 10 million grit and slicing through a human hair like nothing. But we, for the average Joe, we don't need that. We just need a sharp knife. We can slice through a tomato. We can open a box. We can cut a fuel line. We can cut whatever. That's all we need. So to do this, it's cheap. All you need is a $10 stone. And that's all this is. Probably even less than that. Eight to 10 bucks, somewhere in there. And this stone's probably 20 years old. You can see that it was flat on both sides, but it's starting to get concave because it wears a little bit, but it lasts for a long time. And this one is a seven inch. They come in smaller sizes. This is a five inch. And I think a, you know, five inch is getting a little on the small side. It'd be okay for a pocket knife about like this. Um, for kitchen knives and stuff like that, you want a little bit more runway. Um, and that's even a bigger one. I guess this one's about an eight inch. Um, I have a lot of history with this one, so I just like this one. Uh, one side will be coarse and one side will be fine. The coarse side on these, these are like aluminum oxide stones, will be about 120, 150 on this um, coarse side. And the smooth side should be around 240, 250 grit. So coarse side, you can usually can feel it. You can feel which one's coarse and smooth. Okay, now we need to lube it up. You got your stone, you got it on a surface. Let's lube it up. Easiest thing is, is an oil. They, you can buy honing solutions. This is a, uh, I think this is, was a water-based one. And I, I think half of it leaked out and half of it spilt, but uh, the other half spilt, yeah. Uh, I used half of it, but it was okay. Just okay. Uh, I found it worked no better than anything else. You can spit on it if you want. What you want is a really, really thin oil. WD-40 works. Um, WD-40 is really thin. I like to use about a 10 weight oil or so. And so the easiest thing for that is this, is just ATF, any time of ATF, any time of automatic transmission fluid or 10 weight oil works. And that's all this is, or mineral oil. ATF is essentially just mineral oil. You can buy it in your, uh, in the, the medicine department of your, in the pharmacy of any grocery store, you can buy mineral oil for a dollar for like a, almost like a, it's probably half a quart, but we got the oil on the stone, we're on the coarse side, so now we're going to take our knife. The hardest part about sharpening a knife is holding it at a uniform, correct angle. So you don't want to be too steep and you don't want to be too shallow. Because what we want to do is create a nice little V just on the last little sixteenth inch or so. Most places just the last little sixteenth of an inch, it'll taper in, so what it'll do, I should just drive around the knife. So it'll come, both your sides will come up. And then at the last little bit, they'll just come to a point. So you want that angle right there and that angle right there to match up. So one of the easiest ways to do that is to actually take the uh, one of the edges on your blade and just run like a Sharpie down it. And now I can, I got a Sharpie line all the way down my edge. And now I can take my blade and I can hold it. Now look at the back side and you want to keep a certain gap. Um, for this one I'm going to do roughly quarter inch or so just because I've done it before and I know. And then we'll just, we're going to swipe it across the entire length of the blade. So I'm going to run it down the blade while pushing it forward. Just like this. And now I can look at my edge. I'm not using any force. It's freaking some people out. And I can look and see exactly how much of that Sharpie mark I ground off. Let's get you. And with that pass, I took off the entire Sharpie mark right up there where you see the last little bit is actually the step that I drew. So I'm good where if you do it and you still got some on the very, very sharp tip, you actually need to, if there's still some Sharpie mark left on the tip, you actually need to lean it a little bit more forward. If you still got Sharpie mark I guess I'm going to call it the heel. You want to lean it a little bit down. So the whole idea is to use that same that same angle the whole time. So I just do it by watching the back. The way I was taught was to always go into the edge. So your edge is here. It's to push into it and never pull back. 
There is some debate on that whether it anyway it makes any difference. If I have a really dull knife, if I have like a steak knife that's been used a lot and I need one little spot, and usually it's right on this right on this part right here that really just kind of gets dull because people cut their steak with that. I will do a circle motion like this. So technically I'm going against, but I always like to finish out with a with the end of the blade run. And you'll see that as I'm going, because I want to hit the entire blade in one pass, as I start down here, but as I go, I actually have to rotate up to hit this edge. So it's a uniform motion. And then once we get the uh, the first side down and you can actually, uh, you got all the nicks out. And one way you can do that is actually to hold the blade like this and actually look down and you'll see little, um, wherever there's a nick or a dent, you'll see a little glimmer of light. And I see none anymore. So I have all my nicks out. Core side's done. Ready to go to fine. And we do the same thing. We just oil it up. Take our blade. And some guys will cringe because they'll do one pass this way perfect, one pass this way perfect. I like to finish up one to one. But when I first start going, there's no reason you can't do four or five passes one way and four or five passes the other way. Pocket knife's the exact same way. It's just easier because the blade's way shorter. Um, this one, because it arches so much at the end, I'll have to do, you know, a little bit more of a wrist flip. But if you keep it sharp, you don't have to do the core side. You don't have to do both sides unless you got damage. Generally, you only go to the core side if it's extremely, extremely dull, really rolled over, or you got some nicks. This is my everyday carry pocket knife. There's no nicks on it. I keep it up. Pretty good. So I just keep it at that about an eighth of an inch on this one because it's so short. Roll it out to that tip. Start at the base, roll it out to the tip. Finish off with a couple swipes each way. And she's golden. Little teeny knife like this. You're going to be, the shorter the knife, the shorter the width of the knife, the closer that heel is going to be to keep, keep you at that proper angle. Um, this one's only going to be about a sixteenth. You know, at that same angle, this one was almost a quarter of an inch back here. Just because this is so short. But that's about... Usually standard for something like this, you're going to be about a quarter inch away, almost three sixteenths. Something super skinny like this, it's only you know half inch wide. You're only going to you're going to be roughly a sixteenth away. Um, don't try to you know you don't hold it completely flat on each side. You got to have a little bit up, like I showed you before. It kind of the blade tapers up, and then at the last second they give you an edge. So, and if it's really dull, like I said, I'll roll it around. On both sides, and I'll swipe into it. Get that one out of the way. Nice and sharp. So that's the basics. That'll give you an extremely sharp edge where you'll you'll go in and you'll slice a tomato, and it'll just feel like nothing as you go through it. Where you pocket knife, you'll just cut through paper, cardboard, fuel lines. Pick the crap out of your teeth. It'll work amazing at this 240 grit. You can keep going 
and you can go all the way up to I had I think my highest stone is 4,000 grit I have a 1,000 4,000 grit stone but that takes a long time to get it up to that edge and so you'll take this and you'll really work out it. it takes you 30 30 minutes plus and you'll get an amazing edge but as soon as somebody cuts on a ceramic plate or if you have a ceramic cutting board you destroy that edge and instantly or over time you just kind of destroy it or somebody nicks their fork or something it destroys the edge the 240 grit right there is more than ample to give you an amazing edge and a knife cutting knife sharpening video would not be a knife sharpening video without cutting paper so we grabbed a piece of lined paper 240 grit it works so that's the 240 grit will do you can keep going endlessly but this is the basics and you know and this is sharpened on a you know essentially a ten dollar stone in 30 seconds 60 seconds so if you want to watch my other videos on how to sharpen other things scissors saw blades anything that has a blade can be sharpened um i'll put links to those right after this thanks for watching guys thumbs up give me a thumbs down if you just hate me see you guys soon bye Thank you.